1927, the Russian law professor Alexander Sack, the proponent of the theory of odious debt, published a book in which he emphasized that any debt is considered odious if it is not used to meet public needs or in the interest of the state. He wrote, if an authoritarian regime contracts a debt, not for the needs or in the interest of the people, but rather to strengthen its own regime and suppress the population, this debt is odious for the people of the state. It is not a debt of the nation, but a debt of the regime, meaning a personal debt of the power that has incurred it. Sack based his theory on several historical cases, such as the Cuban debt case in 1898, the debt of Imperial Russia in 1918, and the Tinoco arbitration case, dictatorship of Costa Rica in 1923. In all these cases, the colonial or authoritarian government borrowed without the consent of the people and used the loans against the interests of the state, with the knowledge of the lending side. In modern history, South Africa cancelled its debts to Namibia in 1995. Debts incurred during the apartheid regime as those debts were borrowed by an illegitimate regime and used to perpetuate this system and suppress the country's inhabitants. Similarly, Britain cancelled the debts to the former Rwandan regime, which the British Parliament declared illegitimate in 1998 because they were used to purchase weapons used in genocide crimes, with the knowledge of the lending state, Britain. Ecuador also succeeded in cancelling two bond issues offered outside the country in 2000 due to their illegitimacy, as they were issued by a corrupt previous regime. In 1939, the legal advisor to the Greek government relied on the legal principle in his pleading in the lawsuit filed against his government by a Belgian commercial company, stating, Doctrine recognises in this matter the priority of the government's duty to ensure the proper functioning of public services over debt repayment. This historical introduction raises the contemporary question. Can loans from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, be considered odious debts? These loans require the borrowing country to adopt a set of policies in which it commits to the IMF, removing subsidies on basic goods, reducing spending on social services, including education and health, freezing wage increases, increasing the retirement age, halting government appointments, increasing taxes, especially indirect taxes, such as sales tax, liberalizing prices in financial and domestic markets, liberalizing foreign trade and facilitating the flow of foreign goods and services into local markets, removing customs barriers, unifying the tax burden on local and imported industries, and abandoning policies protecting local products. These IMF conditions have changed the concept and form of the state, where privatization policy has taken all income-generating resources, investments, from the state's hand and focused on legislating laws that activate taxes, especially the sales tax that deducts a larger percentage of income from the poor than from the affluent or rich. The state's task became seeking assistance and loans to cover the deficit, debt services and some expenses instead of focusing on creating and funding income generating and investment projects such as education, health, transportation and infrastructure, which are considered future investments. Under these conditions, the lending parties ensured the country's continued dependence by increasing the annual financial deficit, making countries constantly search for loans and aid. The imperialist system created a ruling class loyal to it in poor countries, allowing it to apply democracy that achieves its goals, aligning with its economic, social, political, financial, security, military and trade interests, regardless of the interests of the peoples. Imperial democracy succeeded in eliminating or weakening national, progressive and leftist systems opposed to it, resulting in increased unemployment, poverty, income inequality, increased dependence on international forces and institutions. The imperialist system has surpassed Sachs' theory, becoming the one that determines the standards and mechanisms of democracy and the pre-prepared borrowing conditions for indebted countries, ignoring the actual needs and interests of the countries and emphasizing lending only to regimes loyal to it. IMF policies have failed to achieve economic growth rates and reduce unemployment rates. Instead, they have plunged countries into economic recession and exacerbated crises rather than addressing them. Loans have not been used in the interest of the people, not only with the knowledge of the lender, but according to its request and conditions, in addition to the absence of genuine democracy, allowing peoples to approve or reject the economic policies of these governments. In cases where this democracy has produced governments not loyal to the West, coups have been carried out against them, as in Venezuela and Bolivia, 
the loans of the International Monetary Fund have exceeded the concept of odious debts, becoming even more odious to the interests of nations and peoples. Peoples will not be able to liberate themselves from the yoke of colonization, except by liberating themselves from the shackles of odious loans from the IMF, by reaching national governments that work to cancel these debts and hold accountable the corrupt authorities that originally borrowed them.